All right, so it is the 19th of July 2021, and we have the great honor to talk to Margaret Calvert, the iconic British designer. And um, it is mainly about the Tannenbeer Metro today, your connection to it here in Walton. But I think we need a little bit of context, a little back in time to where you actually were with your career and with your working life at that point. Okay, going back to the actual metro, the Tarnia metro, that would be um, in 1970, either four or six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure, but I knew it was um, 70s. Yes, late 70s, go for that. And I was a partner in Kinnear Calvert Two Hill Limited. Um, and what is interesting about the company is that Jock taught me, um, there was 19 years, that's Jock Kinnear, 19 years difference in our age, and this was at Chelsea, and um, I taught David Tuhill at the Royal College of Art, with only six years difference in our age. So it, it just worked out that way, and David... Um, invited himself to join the company because um, I mean I think college students have got this confidence and I thought this is going to be really difficult you know two very different men very different ages but Jock's um, idea was that once he goes because he was he wanted to retire at 60 I would have a partner but of course it didn't turn out like that, did it? He stayed for about six years and then um, then he left to form his own business. But I've kept in touch. But very sadly, both are dead now. But I keep in touch with Mason Edwards, who was the most brilliant um, associate designer, because as a practice, we employed most from the, the RCA and um, they were all excellent. So I keep in touch with Mason. Yeah, but my whole life, when I think about it, is by chance, pure chance, and these opportunities happen, and it's for you to decide whether you're going to go that path or that path, and that's what I've done all my life. But um, at Chelsea, I was delighted with Chelsea after after a. a, a being a school girl, you know, at a, at a, I won't mention the name of the school because um, that would embarrass me, but um, the art mistress at the school was someone called Winnie Passmore, who was Victor Passmore's sister, who's a very famous landscape artist. And he, she recommended, I did, yeah, I've always liked art, I've always, you know, it's just, just art and sport. It's what I've did all my life at the expense of other subjects. So I'm now just beginning to learn about that there's more to life than just um, art and sport. So anyway, she recommended Chelsea. I got into Chelsea. That was fine. It wasn't very difficult at all. And um, I decided to do illustration and... You do... Well, it's a four-year course, which is very good. You get two, two years as intermediate... And then you have a choice whether you want to go into fine art, which is painting and sculpture, or um, um, printmaking and illustration. And they recommended printmaking illustration, so I did that. And then they, they invited um, a graphic designer to come in one day a week to give the illustrator some idea what graphic design was about, because graphic design did not exist then, as, as I'm sure you know. And so um, a brilliant German designer called Hans Schlager, absolutely amazing designer, he was into design proper as well as advertising. So he would come in and talk and set us the odd project, and I never understood a word he said. I think it was just, just, I don't know. I just didn't understand. But I knew he was a genius because everyone said he was. And he was. And I got to know him once I'd left. I got to know him and his family. And anyway, he then eventually left. And then they replaced him with Jock. And Jock was an associate designer, design research unit. 
And so Jock came in one day a week and I just took off. I used to, you know, art students come in any hours of the day and I made a point of coming, being at my desk. Um, well, there were long tables, they weren't really desks. Um, just in time for his rounds, so to speak. So I worked really, really hard. And then suddenly the, um, the end of the year was coming up and I thought, what, you know, what, what am I going to do? And I certainly didn't want to go into advertising. And there weren't any, I knew nothing about graphic design or, or the fact that you, you, you could be an assistant or go on for another year. I didn't want to go to the Royal College of Art because I didn't want to do another thesis, which you had to do. And so I opted for the extra year of, at um, London University doing a teacher training course, because that was the sort of normal add-on. And I went to the inter interview and um, I said, well, you'll be doing puppets and you'll be doing this and you'll have to talk to 40 students um, in secondary modern school. Um, and I thought, oh God, no, I can't do that. I think I was quite sort of shy in, in that respect. So it was, I was just felt not depressed, but I thought, what now? And then Jock came in and he said, um, I've got this job at Gatwick Airport to do all the graphics and the signs and that, and um, I need some help. Um, so he offered me this job. So of course I resigned immediately from the course, the, the teaching course. And um, he said, oh no, I said, well, what would it, what would it involve? So he said, well, absolutely nothing like what you've been doing here. So I thought, oh, well. Anyway, um, a few days passed the following week, because it wasn't quite the end of term. It was all off. And of course, my whole world, as you can imagine, I would have been 20, coming on 21. My whole world simply collapsed. And then he used to do lots of exhibitions at Wembley for the milk marking board. And I lived in North Ealing then with my sister and um, my mother and sister. And I bumped into Jock on Ealing Broadway station when he was coming back from Wembley to change onto another train. And I think the shock of seeing me, he just said, um, oh, it's all on again. Are you, you know, still interested? And I'm quite sure if I had not bumped into him, it would never have happened. I think he got cold. Something wasn't quite right. So anyway, I went the next day, had coffee, and that's how I began. So that's the end of that story. And I haven't looked back since. <laughs> and so there were simple things that involved lettering. And it was the lettering that absolutely doing a bit of lettering on a book jacket, um, using a, a 0.1 <coughs> <coughs> brush, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and, and gouache. And I loved, I loved doing that. Um, and, and all the other students weren't in the slightest bit interested because I was obviously very different from the others in that respect. So, um, and again, I can remember when, um, once I started working for Jock, um, he just said, well, <clears throat> you need to brush up your typography. Well, I didn't know what the word meant. <laughs> I had to look in the dictionary um, to find a very good explanation. So... Um, and I then went and had evening classes at um, the Central School of Arts and Crafts and Colin Forbes was running the course <clears throat> and a tutor called George Dorby did evening classes and he really opened my eyes and I owe him a lot and you know I, <clears throat> it was then a case of teaching myself you learn on the job and so that was that and I, I was very lucky because the sort of work that came in to, to, to Jock's practice, um, he would just, some very juicy, attractive ones, he'd just say, you know, he'd just give it to me to do. So it was just pure fun. He did all the hard administrative job. Mind you, he didn't pay me very much, but then that didn't matter because I was learning. It was like an education. I would have paid him, actually. So that was that, yeah. 
Well, the so company was then his... Kinnear Calvert yeah. Two Hill Limited. So David had joined us by then, mm-hmm. and, um, and that would be the uh, mid seventies. And again, all a matter of chance because uh, uh, um, Lou Klein was head of department at the Royal Co- uh, in graphic design at Royal College of Art then, and he got this job through his wife, who was also a designer. Um, to design a, a, a logo for the, the um, um, St. Quentin Aunt Eveline, the French New Town. That's all it was, nothing, nothing more. Um, and then he wasn't, oh no, what? Oh no, no, sorry. That was, it was initially that, and they had to use the letter, she, she did it, the first logo, and had to use the letters SQ, which is not what one would normally do. But anyway, she so she did one, and then the whole, it all changed at that stage, and the architects wanted more, and she wasn't interested, and they wanted a, a report written. Now, Jock is brilliant at writing reports. So, to cut a long story short, several design teams were invited to, um, um, to present their work and see if, you know, to be chosen, and the French government were involved too. So there were lots of French companies. There weren't any other English design groups. It was just us, and so all the meetings were in front. I didn't get involved in any of the meetings. And I thought, and then when Jock came back, he wasn't very enthusiastic about how it went. Um, But anyway, again, to cut a long story short, next minute there was a phone call from him. He said, well, we got the job. And I think that was to do with the fact of the road signs, all our work for airports and that. And there, were, there wasn't anyone in France with our um, past experience. So that's how that started. And what was interesting with Lou Klein, because it all came through the fact that I was teaching at the college, Lou, Lou was there, he mentioned it to me, I mentioned it to Jock, and sort of word of mouth. So... Um, all Lou, all Lou wanted to do said he didn't want to be involved in anything at all except if, except maybe colour. Um, but in the end, he just did a marvellous copper tree for a roundabout, which is actually, you can find it at Pentagram today. It's still there. So he was happy. We were happy. Jog did this big report. And the logo St. SQ was designed. I, I actually did that. And Jock's. This is how we worked together as a team. He just had the concept of how it could be in three dimensions. So, um, oh yes, I forget this bit. This is the important bit. And uh, of course, I thought, oh, you know, a chance to design a a, a new um, face for for signs and um, everything. So that's when I started drawing what is now called Calvert. And um, they rejected it on the grounds that they thought it was too English. So, of course, the Tyne and Weir was happening at almost at the same time. So I thought, OK, I'll, um, you know, I think it could work for the Metro. For one very good reason, I just felt that there was so much Helvetica about then that um, it was a chance to to use a a richer face. And I think the Seraphs did just that. And Newcastle is very well endowed architecturally. It's got lovely architecture in that. So um, we used it for the Tyne and Weir, for all the signs. And I think it was called, I mean, it didn't really have a name, so it was just temporarily called Metro. And then Monotype, when they were based in Red Hill in England, um, they were, oh no, I think we, I used it on our letterhead for all our stationery, right? So we thought it would make a good commercial typeface. So we approached Monotype, they're very interested that's where it has started being developed, and um, it was at that point, it wasn't my idea, they said, oh, let's call it Calvert, because there wouldn't be any problems with um, copyright. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't really like the idea of, 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 it just looks too like, you know, I'm 
the greater sort of thing. And so, but it's um, it's it's popular, and it's now been taken up well some time now with monotype in the states. So I get royalties from that, and it's also used for the Royal College of Art on their signs and um, other. It's used by Gov UK. Sorry? Gov UK on online. It is. It works digitally as well. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Clean, it's a, it's a proper typeface. proper digital face. Yes. So if you want to buy it, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we didn't. Um, for the Metro, we complemented, um, I'll call it Calvert now, with um, Helvetica for texts and things like that because it wasn't a digital face then. But now it is a digital face, so if they wanted to use it for everything, they could. And I think what's so wonderful now, for me anyway, with the Metro, is that they've got a brilliant design group, Darren Richardson, and he's he's taken up on the face he actually likes it well i mean if he didn't he'd probably use a different face i think he's your biggest fan ever. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> i met him well, two weeks ago he's, he, <laughs> all he talks about is um, <laughs> yeah well uh, yes but he's a brilliant designer and um so aren't i lucky in that i don't have to do anything and he just does lo love he does lovely things with it And now he's in the process of doing a book on it. So we hope that, that... I mean, it's about the Metro. I have to tell him this. It's not about me. Or I have to keep saying that because I get too much... Too much... Um, I can't think of the word. As if I've done everything. And it's the same with the road signs, you see. Jock hardly gets noticed. Well, it was his job. He got the job. I was just in the right place at the right time. So, you know, two people across a table, you share ideas and thoughts. And um, that's how my passion for designing lettering happened. And that's how it moved on to um, British Rail. Um, and that was a really big challenge. And then New Rail Alphabet and then working with Henrik Kubel because he does, I draw, I have to draw because I think for me it's about... Um, head, eye and hand not heart, heart doesn't mean a thing to me <laughs> I mean heart's, heart's an emotional thing but the head you're working the ideas that in your head and the eye because you're seeing and the hand and it's for me everybody if they drew the same character it would be different because we are physically different and we think differently well not always differently so I have to draw, and it's important for me, especially with um, um, Rail Alphabet 2, uh, which is the one on exhibition at the Design Museum. Um, the actual drawing process takes a long time, and it's the time that, that I think is important. Whereas digitally on screen, I mean, someone can... Everyone's designing typefaces now and fonts and that for any, everything, and they're all got little quirky this and little this and that. Um, and I always think of a typeface a bit like the human body. Um, we're all different shapes, and some are, you know, quirky, but some have character. Some are plain ugly, but but you like them for their ugliness, and some have. Some, I mean, my idea is that they shouldn't date. The ones I've done, that they don't date. So they're not quirky. I am actually working on a quirky typeface at the moment, which is completely illegible, yeah. <laughs> okay. Alpha pasta, yes. <laughs> so that's the internal creative bit. But then you've yes. got the road signs, you've got all the science You're right. of distance... And audience yes. and perception. Yes. So how do you bring that together? Um, well, my simple answer to that is simply intuition. You know, you know what the constraints of any particular job are, and you must establish the constraints. So with the road signs, you know what the problem is. I mean, the, the, the motorway signs, it, it, they were designed 
um, to work for the driver and to be absolutely read at certain stages so that the decision can be made at the right point. Um, so that's it. So once you know all of that, you just look and if you just know if something's working. It's also about, for me, it's about negative and positive shapes. In an actual letter form, in an alphabet, if you actually, you know, the negative steps are the bits that aren't there. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm treating you as a child, aren't I? Yeah, apologies. Do so, please. And so, if you can draw those negative shapes, the actual positive shapes are formed, as opposed to drawing the positive shapes and just thinking whatever happens in the gaps is irrelevant. But whatever. Yeah. The process started, um, I think the commission was um, 1957, I think, yeah. And um, so, so I was on a very quick learning curve, as you can imagine. And that would have been, and it ended in, well, the, the last report, the All Purpose Roads, um, the War Boys one was published in 1963, but the whole um, road sign project wasn't made law in an act in Parliament until 1965, I think. And then, of course, to actually apply the system right across the whole country um, took several years. And um, and some very bad starts. One of the worst things that they did was to actually put too much information on a sign. So it has to be thought out first before you do anything. But um, the Ministry of Transport, as it was then, it's now the Ministry for Transport, I've met up with them on several occasions where they've had little mini exhibitions. And they are... I, I have full admiration for civil servants because they're dedicated to actually getting things right and they're just pleased to be involved with something like that. So that's always rewarding when it's what you've done is shared with a much larger public. And of course it doesn't always work and it isn't always applied and um, certain improvements are made and changes but on the whole it's very much as it was in the early 60s. So... That's, that's so, it. So, you, so the practice has to manage those projects and all those aspects, yeah. civil servants, decision yeah. makers, persuade politicians to, to yes. make, make decisions. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, that all happens through the, the, the committees. And um, the, the, the key civil servant on the committee was a man called... I can't remember his initials, Osborne. And it was at his suggestion that we look at applying the system for the motorways to the all-purpose roads. It was his idea. And he was a delightful man and very bright and just keen to get the job done. So there were these regular meetings that were held with the committees. Um, and some of them and they included the police and racing drivers and a, a big mix of... of people and Jock made all the presentations bar one and I was working on the pictograms and the lettering more than anything else and Jock was responsible for thinking through the whole logic of the system and again we discuss everything together but that was his genius in terms of working that out because he had that very logical mind Scottish. Um, so anyway, I think what happened with the um, roadworks sign, symbol, pictogram, and whatever you like to call it, Jock had Asian flu then when this meetings was supposed to happen. And I, well, very young, and I had to make the presentation to this in very intimidating committee, as you can imagine. So I bought a, a, a suit. I, I, you know, I spent all my money on looking respectable. Um, and 
uh, made the presentation, and they were quite a bit sarcastic about about the the man at work, and just saying it looked like a deep sea driver because the shape of the head was too round. I mean, little things like that, but. That, that's the whole design process. You just take it on board. You don't get upset or anything. You go back and you, any criticism or challenge, we would um, look at it and um, make amends or improvements or argue for it to stay as it is. So that's how, it, and you know, it's just seemed to be general agreement all the time. And then, of course, everything is tested by the Road Research Laboratory. I mean, they play an f- enormous part in it. Um, so that's that story, yeah. So that, that information that's from job, them feeds back yeah. into the design. So the design then becomes altered with the feedback from the Road Traffic Authority yes. or from yes. the, on, on whatever commission. Yes. So... Before you got to the Newcastle, the Metro job, did you already know about Newcastle? You mentioned the architecture, for example. Did, had you visited Newcastle before the Metro uh, Commission? Um, me personally? Yeah. I can't remember, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can't remember Newcastle. Why would I have visited Newcastle? I think not, actually. Yeah. I think the, the Metro was a wonderful introduction to Newcastle Castle. And it was at, at the time when there was a motorway going right up into Newcastle. I can't remember the man who made that all happen. And then it stopped. And then it never happened. And it would have destroyed Newcastle. Um, I'm sure you know about that period in history. Well, that's, that's Biker, but, isn't it? That's yeah. Biker. Look, that was the that's time. Biker that was the time. Story, isn't it? But that's I what love... we were interested in from the council mm, yeah. at that point. I really wanted that motorway, but then never got yeah. built. <laughs> right. yeah. But um, so I know lots of visits up with the architects um, Faulkner Brown, Hendy, and he- Wilkinson. Is it? Is it? Don't know Wilkinson. The name of the architects of the yeah, time. I know Faulkner Metro. Brown, but I don't know Wilkinson. Faulkner Brown. Well, that's what, there were three. Mm-hmm. as a partnership: Faulkner Brown, Hendy, and Watkinsons. I think that was it. Um, and they were wonderful architects. And again, you know, it's just um, we were lucky in that. Um, I mean, they they invited us to do the job. Yeah. So was it Faulkner Brown? The architects actually? invited oh, us, oh, and oh, the okay. Tyne and Weir Metro um, organization which is replaced now with... Um, Nexus. Nexus. Nexus, that's yeah. right. Nexus is a good name. It's a good name, isn't it? And, it's, it's, um, and plenty of opportunity for good forms. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Nex- Nexus seems to have done, you know, brilliant in working with... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so lots of visitors up there. Okay. And one of the... Because, I mean, we were asked to do the whole identity as well as the signs... Um, and I can't find much relating to it except <coughs> lots of letters, documentation going backwards and forwards, mainly to do with money. And you see, Jock did all of that. Such a headache. I have been so lucky because dealing with money and administration, I, oh, it's killing, isn't it? So Jock did all of that, but I obviously went to lots of me- me meetings because it was my my lettering and my idea to do um, these very big platform signs, right? I uh, can't, I mean, really big. The idea being that, and also to have the different stations in different colours, and the idea being that if you're a passenger and you just look through the window, you would see a big slab of a letter, part of a letter in blue or green or whatever, and that would be enough. Um, and they were all on these wonderful vitreous enamel panels. And there was a, the, the, the concept was a very simple one. It was just basically yellow as the key colour. And in my simple mind, I thought, yeah, all the trains could be just yellow, right? Yellow. And then there's this strip band at the top of the um, platform signs which is in yellow and it carries an arrow and what exit. So very simple and that was it. But um, the present designers um, quite, I mean, times change anyway. I think they felt 
it, the different colours was two 80s. I never know what 80s looks like, really. I can never think in terms of decades. My, I just feel that I design now how I was designing then. Um, so I think they've kept, the, they've kept the big lettering and they've also used bands and that. And I think I've got a more restrained colour in black, grey and yellow, which is very um, elegant. So I'm looking forward to actually seeing it, mm -hmm. really am. So, and then I think the way it's been applied across Nexus to the buses, where they mix Calvert with um, Futura, which sounds like very crazy bedfellas, but it works. And it's, it's consistently done, and I think that's how, why it does work. If you are consistent with a consistent with applying an idea, um, it will work. It was like the, the, the um, <clears throat> 2012 Olympics. Everybody absolutely hated the logo and the lettering. Most people, it was a great outcry. But the fact that Wolf Olin's applied it so well and so consistently, it worked, it did its job. And that's the main thing, that it does its job. So I think it, it went astray for a bit. It went all over the place with different fonts being used, and um, sorry, it went a bit wild for for a few years when they introduced different fonts for uh, all sorts. Right, of uh, and it was only when Darren Richardson came in. That, that, yes, that they, 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 they were thinking of dropping it, um, Metro Cat, whatever. No, absolutely. So, I mean, again, this is how things go. It it depends on the whim of a chairman often. You know, but they want to make their mark, mm -hmm. therefore we must change everything. Mm -hmm. And that's happened quite a lot at um, Heathrow Airport. Mm. But um, yes, yeah, so um, Darren Richardson, I'm delighted he's up there, living up there, got a great team, and um, it's marvellous. So I'm looking forward to this book, which is about the Metro, not me. The accidental mm -hmm. item. Yeah. Yeah. So did, Are we nearly through? Well, I was, can, can I ask you about going up to Newcastle? Did you travel up to Newcastle on the train and then stay overnight um, for those meetings? I, or did you... um, I, think we f I think we flew. Okay. But again, I mean, we did a lot of flying to Glasgow and doing flying oh. everywhere. Yeah. So we may not, I don't think we went, because of time, we probably, we probably f flew. <laughs> It has got an airport, has it? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> well, it's got a fantastic metro stop. All right. But when you were working on that, yeah. you'd, you'd been working on the, the traditional line, the uh -huh. old line that went out to the coast. Uh -huh. So that was the first line, wasn't it? Right, it, no, it was just the first bit. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. so you'd been thinking about... Half a dozen yeah. stations. Yeah. Desmond was one. And um, all the way to Whitley Bay. The football one. What's that uh, called? St. James's. St. James's. Well, you see... that. that, that what was nice about that? That had to. Oh no! I'm, I'm no, no, I'm talking too much. No, you're not. No, well, there was uh, there was at the time was where we thought we could do murals. Yeah. As well, and and um, David Tuhill did a wonderful one, a football one, because it's also black, you see, because of Newcastle. That is, those are the colours, aren't they? Of the footballs, um, but that didn't that didn't go all the way. Some ideas just don't go all the way. Very few do. It's the way it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but um, what was so exciting is that the actual metro trains, which were made by, you would know? What was it? Not German. German it wasn't Siemens, was it? Yeah. Was anyway, that, I mean, that was also being newly designed as well. So they weren't just taking stock from anywhere. And um, I can remember going across a field on a track, a trial track, yeah. in this one carriage. Um, and that was such fun. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I wasn't very impressed by the design of it, though. But never mind. It, okay. um, that's how things go. I probably did. But so that, I mean, that was fun. And also getting all the colours right for the enamel. That was very important to get get everyone working on it who were contributing to it. To I think the other good thing about the metro was that there was no 
There was to be no advertising. I'm sure that's changed now. Has it changed? Yeah, money speaks, doesn't it? I think that, and I think also that we were going to play classical Mozart and classical music. Does that happen? It should it be lovely. Does the play Calms the you stations. down, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they played it at the stations also to, yeah. to the, the young so people. So I'm just looking forward to seeing how, how it, you know, with fresh eyes, I can see how so it did, is. Did you actually see the the system working? Were you working before it all? Ah, oh, no, it? never. Now let me tell you that story. The Queen opened it on the first. Oh, I forget the exact date. But it was 1980. I think it was January, but I wasn't invited. So I never got to see it. <laughs> you see, women have a hard time. And I think there weren't many women in the position that I found myself in. And I can remember Jock saying, well, they just don't know what to make about. You, don't, you know, they just, just they can't work it out. Why should a woman have, have that position? So there was all of that that I had to battle was, with. It was one of my questions, yeah. actually. In this I mean, once, once you start working with anybody, it all goes because it's the actual job that matters and they realise what you're about by then. So um, it's a bit of a woman thing as well. Yeah. So yeah. I did go to lots, lots of meetings, to mainly to discuss the colours because um, that was so important to get them right the actual enamels, but it's a lovely material too, and it lasts. Just a clue about the meetings themselves. Was there, how did the meetings go? Did I mean you you suggested? Oh, that? well, Jock Jock went to all the presentations. I never went to any presentation, so I only went to meetings when um, something was agreed and it was about the quality. But otherwise, Jock did all the presentations and he would come back, you know, either with good news or not good news. Because I have to say with the actual M on a square, the Metro M, we had ideas, well, actually, it was actually mine, but I, I don't like to say this is my idea and that. It's just ridiculous, really, you know. But um, the M was three-dimensional and it was yellow and it went at an angle like that that's the ground and it was cut like that so you'd see an m in portrait vertical if you can understand and then another version because that was ridiculous vertical one on a cross with an m in each one like that so you could read it from every angle. They absolutely loved it, right? <laughs> so of course it's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> um, I think partly because... So they did trials as well. They made full-scale ones. I've got some lovely images of a full-scale one. That can go in the book, maybe. Yeah, if I can find it. Um, but I think it was... It, was um, it wasn't used in it they want, wanted something more conventional. The square, I mean, the square works. I mean, you get a square at most metro stations in Russia. Everywhere it's a square. And it looks, and it does work. And I think the vertical one could have been dangerous. I think children would have used it as a slide, maybe. <laughs> or um, dogs to pee up against. I don't know. But anyway, it didn't happen. So um, that's how things take a long time. You don't just go straight in with the one idea. Well, you do, but it you have to work quite hard to get it to work. Um, so <clears throat> what pleased me is that they really went for the large signs because that was quite innovative at that time. And they were beautifully made. And I drew each letter full size. Now, don't ask me how big they were, the X height. I don't know, because I'm get bound to get that wrong. Something like 600 centimeters how much is that in feet anyway don't worry about that big they're big but i drew each letter full size on something called coda trace and i've still got them because i found it very difficult to throw them away so i've got those hand drawn full size because it's difficult to scale something up then it was difficult to scale something up so i had control over that and it's always important to have control
Right. But did you say the the yellow of the trains? <coughs> so. The yellow of the trains yeah. was chosen by you as well, was it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a very simple idea. I mean, we used yellow too at um, on the airports. Um, because I mean, it's just very legible color anyway. The black on yellow for way out was important. Most important sign is the exit sign. I mean, the real ones are green, aren't they? White on green. If you you know what I mean by real, yeah, standard safety ones, yeah. So yes. So, so the, the committees, the committees, the committees, I guess, were mostly men or all men. The committee that you were dealing with for the metro. Um, were they were they determined? I mean, they seem to be very enthusiastic from the interviews that Sylvie's done. And these men seem to be incredibly enthusiastic about the project. They were all, yeah. I have to say that the, the enthusiasm was intense. It was there. They wanted it. They knew they were working on something great because the metro um, that was the very first in the whole world. And I mean, now they're all over the place, aren't they? So, um, yes, I mean, it, 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 is, it is this team effort and this collaboration that works as a designer. You can't think of yourself as someone imposing your views down ever. It's got to be, for these big jobs, it's got to, there's got to be a rapport there and an understanding. Otherwise, you know, it's not, you're not going to work. Um, so one of the, one of the other questions I had was about the we spoke about constraints mm. um, and you know of the client and the possibilities for creativity. How was that balance in the Newcastle job? Can you remember when you're coming up? Was there points of frustration that the committee wasn't? You spoke about the M, but on the other hand, they accepted the idea of yellow. Mm -hmm. So how did that actually work? Was there what, did you have allies on that committee or were the committee? It's difficult. Generally. Well, as I didn't attend mm. any of the meeting, it's difficult to say. It was only what Jock said about them. So I, I really can't actually mm. answer. It sounded, that like, it sounded like for I, Brown were. I really. think they were happy to go along with things to a certain extent. But <laughs> what was. You just knew that, that um, the Tyne and Weir. Um, I can't remember the proper formal name, but the one that's now replaced by Nexus completely. <coughs> isn't it? Yeah. Um, passenger transport uh, authority. But they had this absolutely hideous logotype. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, haven't you? Sort of, I think there's supposed to be a, a river in the middle or something. Well, not the river, the Mersey would be with the Mersey. I've, no, it's not the oh, Mersey, that's Tyne. Liverpool, Tyne. isn't it? Tyne. Tyne. Tyne, of course, it's yeah. Tyne and Weir. Yeah. No, Weir is not, yeah, Weir is... We Sunderland. Like what you wear, yeah. No, Sunderland, no, no. it goes yes. as far as Sunderland, yeah. doesn't it? That's yeah. right. So that's yeah. the weir bit. Yeah. So that's weir side. So, yes. So um, I think they just ex accepted everything more or less until they didn't. But the thing is, they sure. wanted that logo on, on the trains. And I was all for simply the word metro. So there's mm. a little model upstairs of a yellow, yellow metro train, which you might have seen. And it just has metro on it, and then on the front of it, it has to, the destination in Capernaum, which is very simple. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really, too it's, simple, you see. No, no, I don't think that's really interesting because the sort of Newcastle mm -hmm. sort of cringe, if you like, of being, you know, on the edge, whereas you're you're suggesting something that's universal. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's sort of like you know, metro. This could be this could be New yeah. York, but of course, Newcastle. Well, we're going to talk yeah. about the time. Yeah. We're going to talk about Newcastle. Mm -hmm. It is really, really interesting. You had you had you had Faulkner Brown. They were your allies, weren't they? They brought you in. Sorry, Faulkner Brown, the architects. Faulkner Brown, the architects. Yeah. I mean, they were your allies. They oh, absolutely, you absolutely. They, they it would not have worked without. Mm. Um, Faulkner, Faulkner Brown, they were wonderful. Mm. And their design principles And they were would try things like out and, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, they were very much with us, yes. Mm -hmm. but, but very similar, were, were there very similar firms in terms of outlook, philosophy? Yes. Or was there differences, differences between Faulkner Brown's philosophy and your practice philosophy yes. or was it similar? I would say it was similar, yes. I mean, there is, a, there is an understanding you're on the same wavelength, and if you're not, 
then it's not going to work. Mm. And we were. But they, I mean, I found them amazing. Because, I mean, to actually use that typeface, that, that was quite a big step. Yeah, exactly. It really was. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm surprised they didn't say, why don't you use Helvetica? Exactly. Um, but, so, I mean, yeah. they accepted all of that, but then we went to a lot of trouble to show um, how we presented it. I mean, that's terribly important, uh, how you present it and the colours. So it just has that wow factor. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if you don't mind, just a quick one. The Faulkner Brown design um, guide came out in '75, I think. Did did you influence each other actually with this? Because your principles seem so similar. This this clean design, this you know simple clean design. Um, did do I, you think I don't, you influenced I, them as well? I don't. Um, I can't say specifically yes or or, or no. Really, it's just. It's just a matter of like minds and all trying to achieve. So, I mean, if someone says, oh, that doesn't work, or, or something about, or I don't think that's the right arrow, because at first I tried to, I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but I went for a retro arrow, right? That means a Robin Hood one. Well, that's ridiculous, but I thought, oh, that would be interesting. And of course it wasn't going to happen, was it? So in that respect... They would put the brakes on, but I mean, it just fell away. It wasn't a, wasn't an issue. So it's just the way people work together as a team, isn't it? Yeah. But these two firms are modernist. They're the upstart firms, aren't they? Oh, ah, yeah. Another upstart firm. Yeah. And you Defin- know, from definitely, definitely, about... that's that. I like that. Yeah, I, I like they're... being thought of an upstart modernist. Certainly, modernism is is um, at the root of everything that we've done. Design any of the, the wayfinding signage for the metro. The, the actual signage, the wayfinding signage. The, the wayfinding for any, signage. For any of the stations, did you design any of them? Oh, you're talking about designing the actual, the, the actual signage. Yes, yes. no, yeah. abso- oh, absolutely. Yes, I mean, that was very much the, um, the same system as the one for um, British Rail. Um, the arrow, the the legend, and the arrow on the end. And uh, you know, because if you come up with with um, something that works to that degree, you keep applying it. And of course, it's um, it's it's different now in terms of how they've because they've they've they they have used pictograms as well, don't they? Um, so there's a there's a kind of um, well, it's just how things get different or change slightly in time. The same with, um, 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 what are they calling it now? Um, Great British Railways. That's what it's going to be called, Great British Railway. So, um, I don't mind. I like the word great. <laughs> After Anyway. Do you like the letters um, of the word great, don't you? Yes. Yeah, G-R-E-A-T. That's well, right. Good, yeah. good design um, then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I um, I'm very self-indulgent. Yeah. Still like those I think I'm allowed to be at my age. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about boy and girl thing, uh, you touched on it before. Did you face? I mean, transport is such a male-dominated field. And you <laughs> experienced quite a lot of it. Did you face many challenges? Being a woman, did many men... <laughs> did I face many challenges, challenges as a woman? A woman Do you mean gen- generally speaking? In the transport. Oh, in the in transport. The transport. Um, I think, to be honest, no. I think thinking of British Airports Authority as it was then, and British Rail... Um, no, I didn't, actually. It was... Mo- it was no, I think I, I, I think it's what I've said before, is the minute you start working with someone on a problem and they know what you're about and, and it's about respect. Once you have their respect, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, really. I mean, I, I, have, I would have problems with, with, well, with one assistant that, that we took on and 
any new assistant would be expected to make the tea and coffee. I did that. I mean, that's part of, it's part of how it is. And because he was a man, he hated that doing that. So he'd always bang the cups down and bang this and that. And he said he could never, ever, ever work for a woman. So this is it. This, this is an attitude. And I, th I think also teaching at the Royal College at, uh, in the early mm -hmm. mid six, 1966 till 2001 with a short spell as head of graphic design. But um, there were students that just thought, no, graphic design is a, a, a man's job. I've been told that on several occasions. Women just go to art college to find a husband. So that that's was the attitude then. And if a man said to you in the 50s that that's a pink elephant crossing the road, you agree that is a pink elephant crossing the road. It was definitely like that. I mean, it, never, it, never, it really didn't bother me at all. Okay, I've got one final promise, one final question, yeah. right? And this goes back to the M. The oh, the M. M and the Calvert font. Oh, this, so, is, this so, is very... Oh, this so, is a big subject. Yeah, oh, I've got some stories there. Right, because there's no serif. Correct. Now that, you see, that is... Uh, well, this... I'm sorry, I'm getting lost for words. Monotype used to have great big... Um, um, gatherings, what there's a word for them, where people would come all over the world and they, held, they were held in Cambridge at Queen's College and that. There were big deals then until they went, Monotype went to America. Um, and so you spent a few nights there for all the presentations. And I can remember at breakfast, I was talking to someone and this man came up his name was Colin Banks of Banks and Miles. And um, he looked, he just interrupted the conversation and he said, um, Monotype sent the face, your face, to Brooke Crutchley of the Cambridge Press and they sent it back because they thought it was just so awful with all the half serifs. And then he walked off. I mean, that was just, that's terrible, isn't it? And so the man I was talking to, you know, what's that? So because I'd done something that you should never do. And I thought, great. And I did it for a very good reason too. Because there's a typeface called Rockwell, which um, has normal serifs. And it's just the way, again, intuitively you start doing something. And you start drawing something by hand again. It evolves. It's, it's there. It's you. And that's how that happened. But it upset a lot of people. <laughs> and now no, nobody thinks about it. You know? And of course, it's what gives that M its character. If it had a, a serif, slab serif on both sides, it wouldn't be such an interesting shape. That's how I see it. I think that's quite character, characterful, the square. I like the square now. And of course, they just have that on the front of the trains, don't they? Yeah. So that's utter simplicity. That's more simple than metro. So, <laughs> so that's why so I'm pleased that, that um, you pass the baton on and someone else wins the race but, with it. So did, I like but, that. But you didn't like it initially. What? Did you? Oh, no, I just thought a square mm. what wasn't, in, wasn't as interesting as a three dimensional one like that. Cut at yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was the point, really. That would have been that would have been really something, as opposed to a consistent statement that works and does its job. And I was wanting more. But so you, if you go for more, you can always come back. So you should always go for the highest. Yeah. And then you can always come down. But, yeah. but it works mm. and you're right it's very identifiable so I'm really looking forward to I'm, I'm, as you see what terrifies me is when I do see something that 
I've seen bits here and a bit there on television and there. When I see for when I experience it as a passenger, that will be the real test. So I, I, I I'm looking forward to that moment, and I don't know whether I will think fantastic or this or that. I don't know what I will think until I see it. So that's a bit scary because I want to like it, obviously. Well, I hope I will. Look, we look forward to seeing you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I have please, to come. Yeah. Yeah. Please come and visit. <laughs> right. I think we've done quite well. We've done extremely yeah. well. Thank you very much.